This is a Squiz Kids podcast. Your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. Each week we give the world globe a spin and see where we land. Then we take the kids of Australia on an audio excursion to visit that country and its people. I'm Amanda Bauer and today on Squiz the World we're visiting a country whose ancient city, Petra, has featured in movies like Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade... Aladdin, The Mummy Returns. Can you guess where we're going? Let's strap ourselves in to the Squiz Kids super fast supersonic jetliner as we take off and take a squiz at Jordan. Just the facts. If you look on a world map, I'll pop one in your episode notes, you'll see that Jordan is in the Middle East at the crossroads of Africa, Asia and Europe. Over the course of human history, it's been in the middle of it all. Crusades, trades, wars, trade wars. In fact, Jordan's population has grown significantly because of war. Its northern neighbour is Syria, which has been in a civil war for the last 11 years. And to the west are Israel and the Palestinian West Bank, which have been in conflict for decades. Jordan's population is 11 million, and almost 3 million of those people are Syrian and Palestinian refugees. That puts a big strain on the economy of Jordan. You might be thinking that Jordan, like a lot of other Middle Eastern countries, makes its money from oil. But there's barely any oil in the kingdom and hardly any trees either. Only 2% of Jordan is forested, compared with the international average of 15% of a country. But in the northern mountains, where there are oaks and wild olive trees, there's also something really special, long-eared hedgehogs. They've got great hearing, thanks to those ears, and they're actually surprisingly fast, like Sonic the Hedgehog. I'll pop a link in your episode notes to prove that they are also super cute. Aww. A lot of Jordan's money, then, comes from making fertiliser, who knew, and from tourism. In a non-COVID year, about 5 million people come to visit Jordan. That's almost half the country's population. Some of those tourists actually walk all the way across Jordan to see the site. So that does prove that it is a small country. Australia is 86 times bigger. And I'd be shocked if every single one of those tourists didn't visit Jordan's most famous tourist site, Petra. If you've seen Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade or Aladdin or The Mummy Returns, then you've seen Petra already. It's one of the seven wonders of the world and it's also called the Rose Red City because its buildings have been cut out of red rock faces. I'll put a link to a video in your episode notes. It really is extraordinary. Now, whenever you travel, it's important to learn a few words in that country's language. It's a great way to show respect. So let's... Learn the lingo. In Jordan, the official language is Arabic, but Arabic sounds different in every country, the same way that our English accent and dialect in Australia is very different from Irish or American. So we've asked Squiz Kid Alexander to teach us a typical Jordanian greeting. Alexander is nine and he lives in Melbourne. He was born in Australia, but he takes real pride in speaking completely fluent Arabic. His dad is Jordanian. Alexander, can you teach us a typical Jordanian greeting? The first thing Alexander says is marhaba, which is a typical Arabic greeting. But it's what he says afterwards that I find so beautiful. The translation is basically, hello, how are you, people of kindness? What a great way to start a conversation with kindness. People are always really grateful when you just try to speak their language. They may even thank you for it. Hey, Alexander, how do we say thank you? Shukran. Islamu. And shukra to you too. Now that we can communicate a little bit, it's... Time for school. So if you're getting ready for the first day of the school week in Jordan, you'll be getting ready on Sunday morning and your weekend will start on Friday. That's because Jordan is an Islamic country and for Muslims, the most important religious day is Friday. So you have Friday and Saturday off from school and Sunday is a regular work day. Almost 100% of kids in Jordan go to primary school, but 
By grade three, only one third of those kids are reading at grade level. The refugee crisis is a huge part of that problem. With so many extra kids, classes are overcrowded and the education budget has to stretch to cover many more kids. Lots of international non-government organisations called NGOs are trying to help with money and furniture for classrooms and things like that. Now, when people visit Australia, there are things they find amazing that we might take for granted. And Jordan has something I find pretty astonishing. Believe it or not. I want you to think about swimming in the ocean and what it feels like if you open your eyes underwater Ouch. or cop a mouthful. <clears throat> Salty, right? Maybe you've even noticed dried bits of salt on your skin when you get out of the water. Well, the water in a certain lake in Jordan is almost 10 times saltier than the average ocean. Ew! Are you feeling brave? Yeah? Okay, take two tablespoons of water and mix them together with one tablespoon of salt. Then have a little drink. Blech. That's how salty the water in this particular lake is. It's one third salt. Because of this hypersalinity, salinity means saltiness and hyper means a lot, no plants or animals can grow in this lake, which is why it's called the Dead Sea. Believe it or not, the Dead Sea was one of the world's first health resorts. King Herod the Great went there more than 2,000 years ago to float in these waters. They're said to have healing properties. And boy, oh boy, can you float. I want you to imagine floating in a normal pool or at the ocean and then lifting up your head and chest and trying to read a book while you float. A uh, soggy book, right? <laughs> but in the Dead Sea, that is no problemo. There's a fantastic video in your episode notes that will go into more detail about the science behind this. But essentially, that hypersalinity means that it's impossible not to float in the Dead Sea. So why is it so salty? Well, the video will go into that too, but it's got a lot to do with the fact that the Dead Sea is the lowest point on the planet. The bottom of the lake is 728 metres below sea level. Rain erodes salt out of rocks. It does that all over the world. And the salty water in the Dead Sea makes it down to the landlocked lake and then has absolutely nowhere else to go. Add to that the fact that average temperatures over the summer are in the high 30s and you can imagine how a lot of water evaporates, leaving a lot of salt in the water left behind. Oh, all that floating is absolutely exhausting and I'm stuffed. I think it might be dinner time. The national dish of Jordan is called mansaf. It's a kind of lamb stew cooked in a special yogurt sauce and served with rice. It's found at important events like weddings, funerals and holidays. Now in Jordan, mansaf is made with a kind of dried fermented goat's yogurt called jamid. I've put a recipe in your episode notes that uses plain Greek yogurt, but for those of you who are adventurous chefs, there's also a recipe for making your own jamid. Yummy. Time for the quiz. This is the part of the podcast where you get to test how well you've been listening. Question number one. What is the first day of the school week in Jordan? That's right. It's on Sunday. Question number two. How much of the water in the Dead Sea is salt? Yeah, one third salt. Ooh. Question number three. What cute little critter lives in one of the few forests of Jordan? No, it's not Sonic. It's the long-eared hedgehog. Yeah! That's all we have time for today. Thanks for staying curious about the world and joining me on this incredible trip to Jordan. Now get out there and have a most excellent day. Over and out.